Well, hello and uh, welcome to another Perspectives and the first Perspectives of the new year 2024. So uh, a warm welcome to everyone for this new year. And I hope that uh, people had a smooth entry from the old year into this year. I, for one, uh, took it easy. I made sure that I wanted to step back from all the shenanigans, at least have some days at Christmas and New Year quiet, um, reading and keeping warm and cooking a few drinks, but uh, not overly occupied with other stuff. I even managed to uh, not open my computer on Christmas Day. Uh, New Year's Day, I can't quite remember if I opened it or not, but... Uh, the point is, I did take a step back. And <clears throat> now that I've kind of come back to the desk, as I call it, back at the desk, meaning back at my work and um, into my operative mode, um, the first thing I see when I look around on the uh, in the ethers of the Internet, on the byways of this electronic highway, is, of course, the year begins with full of predictions. And, you know, every Joe Bloggs from so-called celebrity to uh, plumber is making predictions. And, of course, now, especially with these uh, rapidly shifting times and so many events going on in the world, uh, then there's a lot of open space for making predictions. And um, I tend to refrain from that. Um, discussing potentials is possible, but predictions, um, and you see, you can see it out there, um, a lot of what's known as clickbait. And you get these thumbnail videos saying, big things coming down the line in 2024, or must, must read predictions. Or amazing, can't believe it. Um, what will happen in 2024 and et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's all clickbait. Um, I mean, some of these are, uh, you know, fairly ordinary uh, conversations and many people have the good intentions, but whoever puts up these thumbnails is, is clearly clickbaiting. Um, and of course, it's different from having astrological predictions, which are more expansive and based in, you know, more kind of uh, large scale attributes and aspects according to astrological movements. But when you get people saying this is going to happen this month, you know, like in April, there's definitely going to be a cyber attack um, or this is going to happen with the banks at this time because my my spirit guides told me, etc. Um, we must be cautious. And the thing is, is that um, we only we only really can uh, perceive according to where we are. It's much more difficult to perceive beyond the threshold. And as I mentioned before, the phrase did the philosophy of the fish ever help it to become an amphibian? You know, I'm sure that you know if we used a metaphor of evolution, it's a flawed metaphor, but let's use it. Um, if you had the waterborne creatures and the next step on the evolution was to go onto land, do you think those waterborne creatures ever envisioned what it would be like to, to you know, shift their gills into air and oxygen breathing lungs and to walk on land? No, I doubt it. Um, because you cannot envision what is the next stage when it's beyond the the tools, the apparatus, the limitations of the consciousness we have at the time. And I think that's the that's something we should keep in mind when um, trying to envision, um, you know, next stages, as it were, or iterations in the human journey. Um, I'm reminded that um, 20 years ago, I had to think about this, actually, 20 years ago, I was doing my, my PhD, my doctorate, and it was on complex systems. 
and I was in sociology and I was doing my complexity thesis doctorate in a social cultural environment. I was looking at social cultural dynamics and interaction with technology and how that operated according to complex systems. But of course, like in any doctorate, you have to, before you venture into your hypothesis, you have to show that you know the area that you're dealing with. So my early chapters, I had to look into the history of complex systems. So I studied complex systems in, in their origin from uh, their background in chemistry, looking at uh, the work of the Belgian chemist Ilya Prigogine, who, who won a Nobel Prize for his work in uh, dissipative structures and non-equilibrium thermodynamics. So I looked at the chaos, um, non-linear complex systems in chemistry. I looked at it in biology. I looked at the work of Francisco Baella and others and how complex systems operate in biology, even the work of quantum biology as well, um, and how fields influence complex system behavior. I looked at complex systems in physics, of course, and, and phase transitions, in economics, um, and in all these other disciplines before I came to, to socialize it. So I came to know very well the underlying dynamics of, of chaos theory, um, you know, and, um, and the background to, of course, the whole complex systems, which was a further iteration of chaos theory, really. And um, so, you know, it's quite simply, complex systems get, as they get more complex, they need more energy to, to sustain them. So they're bringing more energy, which helps them to complexify, expand, let's say. And they expand and expand, and they become more complex by bringing in more energy to sustain themselves, and then they grow, expand into more complexity, et cetera, et cetera. Then inevitably, they come to a point where the limits of their complexity in that particular system have been reached. It's like a threshold moment. Um, known as a phase change. And when you get to that moment of, of um, you could say, in unstable complexity, a, a threshold of instability, when you get to that point, um, you have a bifurcation potential. And a bifurcation potential means that um, you really basically, by meaning two, you have two pathways in front of you. And as new energy comes into this increasingly fragile and, and unstable system, the two potentials are the next wave or incoming energy will collapse the system because it's too fragile to main, sustain itself with the new energy input, or the new energy input enables it to phase change and jump into a different uh, complex system, the next level as it were or the next iteration the next um systemic uh, arrangement and so that's the bifurcation you and it's known as the breakthrough or breakdown moment and and it's and bifurcation and complex systems has been used in evolution i also studied evolutionary theory in complex systems and systems philosophy and uh, the work of ludwig bertalanffy and others in the system sciences. Um, so when you get to that moment of fragility, instability, uh, you don't know, the system itself doesn't know if it's going to break down, collapse, and then reassemble itself into the kind of same or similar order of system, and then start to increase its complexity once again, and I looked at this in the uh, breakdown of civilizations. Civilizations often collapse. The collapse of civilizations is well known. And then they start to engage once again in expanding, growing and becoming more complex. Or you get to that point where the system utilizes the, new, the energy coming in to flip over into a new order of complex system. It's a new arrangement based on a more, let's say, a more sophisticated uh, systemic arrangement. 
So at that point, when you're reaching that threshold, there's no way of knowing what the new systemic order will be and how it will be reached, only that you sense the threshold is coming close. So using that understanding of complex systems for the present moment, um, when people are predicting what's going to happen ahead, they're only predicting for the current systemic arrangement. I mean, there are different elements that can happen. You can have a different arrangement in economics and, and social systems and, and um, other aspects. And you can predict, if you wish to, that the system will collapse and go into the breakdown mode. But if you're predicting a breakthrough, then you don't have enough information because, of course, a complex system is based on it on information as well, an arrangement of information. And the complexity of information usually underlies a complex system. You don't know what that next arrangement will be. You don't have sufficient data. And you can speculate. And people are speculating about what the new human will be. But, of course, we cannot say. It can be vastly different. Um, and new arrangements can, can reorientate themselves very quickly in evolution in terms of evolutionary time um but of course what i see happening is that there's a lot of predictive programming out there because if you are this side of the threshold and you feel that the tipping point is coming and you may want to um, influence the next arrangement in the system um, then you can try to um, like we call a you know a self-fulfilling prophecy you can try to put it into arrangement by predicting beforehand into the individual elements of the system so of course let's say in the human civilization if enough people are are filled with predictive programming of what will happen when we pass the threshold whether break down or break through then those ideas will be in human consciousness. If they're strong enough, they uh, may have an impact upon the the field of thinking and consciousness to start to bring emerge emerge those aspects into the next system. And one of these uh, major predictive programming tropes at the moment, of course, is is AI and the uh, the machinic advancement in technologies. And in reason now, you know, AI talk has been around with us for, you know, 75 years or so. In the, in the 1950s, when they, they had the first major gathering where they termed AI was at the, the called, I think, the Macy Conferences. And the Macy Conferences in the 1950s, people were very enthusiastic saying AI will be with us in 30 years by the 1980s. Still wasn't with us. And still isn't with us to that degree that people envision it. Um, technology has vastly accelerated. And we have these algorithms. We have a very, in, very smart machine and ecosystem. But of course, it's become a very big subject now because it's really like a cult. It's, you could call it a religion. But because the people behind this cult religion are dominating players, they either um, are behind the biggest tech industries, they're behind government, they're behind media platforms, that they're selling it to us as a, as a curtain inevitability. Now, of course, there's certain trends that are inevitable, such as robotics coming into the workforce, robotics taking over certain um, skill sets, of intellectualization, calculation, production, and these areas. But having this idea that it's the next species to replace the human being, that we are going to upload our minds to it and give away our souls to it, and it's going to be the next evolutionary dominant species that will then crush human, human beings, or, or it, it's the end of the human era. This is actually a thinking held by a very small minority of people. But, of course, it's now entered the predictive program of a lot of mass media. And um, when you get to a threshold or a tipping point, um, these, these 
small or what were previously small iterations of thinking, if they are condensed enough, they can have a very, very high impact because a fragile system reacts sensitively to even the smallest of impacts. And um, an example of that is, let's say you're building a, a sand castle or a mountain of sand on the beach and you build it up and you think it's stable and then you just put the last few grains of sand in it and that causes the whole thing to collapse because the sand castle or the mountain of sand had reached a, a kind of very fragile state of dynamic equilibrium was any extra element or aspect could um, destroy that equilibrium. So I would say to be very be careful of uh, predictive programming at this time of heightened um, instability in our cultural systems. And um, be aware that predictions are loosely predictions. I prefer to call them speculations. And um, the most useful element in any uh, complex system is stability, equilibrium, and harmony. That's what gives the system its strength. So even if it goes through a tipping moment, if it carries over certain energy or energy of intention of stability, equilibrium, equilibrium and harmony, that will go into the new system. So, and also any aspects or elements, what I mean by that is individuals, people that are within the system to be carried over in the system, a sense of internal stability and equilibrium will help that transition uh, within the phase change of the system. Um, now, saying that, actually, uh, I was about uh, to do a recording of a quartet talk, talk last night. Some of you who, who know that I do quartet talks every two weeks, um, the theme was about discussing what may be coming up in this year, 2024. Uh, the talk was abandoned because of techn technological issues, or technical issues, so we'll be recording next week instead. Um, but one of the things I was going to say is that I'm, you know, for my contribution, it's not predictions, it's uh, speculations and uh, thinking about certain aspects. And I think we all have responsibility um, in this time um, of an unstable system, not to add more instability there through fear or um, through clickbaiting and and putting out uh, disingenuous memes, let's say. Because right now, one of the major aspects of this system we're currently in is trust. And there's a very little of that going around white right now. Um, so for me, one of the things I've been thinking about as I come into this new year is um, being very careful where to place my trust. Not only trust in people, um, but trust in the information I look at, I receive, the information I evaluate, and um, and most external impacts that are coming <clears throat> our way. We need a discernment of trust, I think. So that's just a few thoughts that run th ran through in my mind. I wanted to share that, and that's my opening perspective for 2024. Um, so whilst bearing in mind trust, let us stay well, stay sane, stay healthy, and above all, be grounded. Cheers.